Hi, this is Jill from HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform a split plot ANOVA in uh, SPSS. Uh, split plot ANOVA is sometimes referred to as a mixed design analysis of variance, and I, that's probably a bit unfortunate because a mixed design analysis is probably a term we should use exclusively for those. Uh, analysis of variances which incorporate both fixed effects and random effects. This uh, is a split, this is not the type of analysis I'm going to do in this video. What I'm going to do is a split plot ANOVA, which is an analysis of variance which incorporates both a repeated measure effect as well as, as, well as a between groups effect. And it's going to be the simplest case in this analysis. Uh, it's going to be uh, a 2 by 2 ANOVA where there are two levels in the repeated measure, time 1, time 2, and the between groups or between subjects effect has two groups, uh, a control group and a treatment group. Now in this fictitious example I've got data based on resilience which was measured uh, pre-training uh, in let's just say employees in a workplace and then we've, and that's this variable here, so each uh, subject has had resilience, some kind of resilience measure uh, estimated at time one, and it's a sample size of a hundred, so a hundred people, uh, and then I've got a resilience uh, variable, it's another, the other dependent variable, the time, the, or the second level of the dependent variable, variable. Uh, time two, or resilience two, each uh, individual has been measured twice, uh, resilience one, resilience two, so that subject there, subject one, 67, and subject one at time two had a resilience score of 60, so they actually dropped a little bit, uh, which is not what you'd hypothesize, but uh, random fluctuations possibly. And in this variable here, we've got the grouping variable, and this zero demarcates uh, a control group participant, and I've got value labels in the background identifying that. And then at subject 51, uh, it begins with uh, the number 1 to demarcate individuals in the treatment group. Now this could be any type of data. It doesn't have to be a control and a treatment. It just means that you've got two groups. Uh, and I've, I've used 0, 1 to demarcate those two groups. You could technically use any numbers you, wa you wanted as long as they are homogeneous within each group. Uh, so this is an lecture on split plot ANOVA. I'll assume that you understand what the analysis is. It's more of the nuts and bolts of doing the analysis in SPSS. So if you got your data, time one, time two, and then you've got your uh, independent uh, groups variable uh, control and treatment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into analyze and general linear model and repeated measures. Now it comes up with within subject factor name, factor 1, that's the default. You can change that to any time, anything you want. You'll probably want to change it to something meaningful uh, if you had more than one factor name and uh, more than one within subject's factor. So I'm going to call it uh, pre-post resilience and it's got two levels, time 1, time 2. And so that's the first thing you have to do to do this analysis. And then we get into another uh, window. And w w uh, SPSS is asking us to populate these two levels of the within subjects variable uh, with the actual uh, variables that we want to analyze. And so resilience one is the first one that we want to put in. And then resilience two is the second one we want to put in. And then we use our grouping variable. If to put into the between subjects factor. Now if I didn't include this between subjects factor variable in this window here, we'd be doing just a basic repeated measures ANOVA. But by including the group subjects factor, uh, we're now doing a split plot ANOVA. Now there's a few things that I'd recommend that you include in the analysis, uh, and in particular, uh, in particular, and um, uh, there are some there are probably more options than you're going to want to look at. And uh, I choose descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, maybe observed power, and homogeneity tests. 
Uh, I'm not saying that you're not going to get information from the other options, but these are just the basics of doing a decent analysis. Now, I'm also going to want to display the means for the group by post, uh, pre-post resilience. Um, so this is going to decompose the means for each of the four uh, groups, if you will, that, I'm, that, I, that are the basis of the analysis. You could put more if you wanted to, but um, I'm not going to bother with this analysis. So display means for the group by pre-post resilience variable. Now I'm also going to want to plot the data. In fact, I would say that plotting data, once you start getting relatively complicated designs, it's the only way to make sense of it in a succinct way. Uh, and I'm going to do so in, with profile plots in SPSS. And to do that, I'm going to use my pre-post resilience uh, variable and I'm going to include that in the horizontal axis axis and I'm going to put the group into the separate lines uh, option and then I'm going to click add so it's going to display for me a pre post resilience by group uh, line graph so I'm going to click continue and then I click OK just delete that So let me make this window a little more viewable for this video. Just bear with me. Okay, so what we get uh, is a lot of uh, output to begin with, but I want to move straight to the bottom, which is the uh, which is the um, profile plot, because this is what. Uh, ultimately you're going to be using to help you interpret your analyses. But I'm going to go back to the statistics in a minute. So what we have here, I'm going to make this chart a little bit smaller. Just a second here. Okay. So what we have uh, is pre-post resilience, so that's time one, and this is time two, and I could actually alter that quite easily in the chart if I wanted to. But for now, I'm just going to say that we can have, we have the control group going from time one to time two, very little difference. In fact, it's going down a very small amount. It's not statistically significant, I can tell you. Uh, what we have here, though, in contrast, is the training group. We can see the green line here. The training group is moving upwards quite substantially. And so resilience from time one to time two in the training group is going up quite substantially. At least it looks so. But the control group is basically not moving at all. And this is basically what we'd hypothesize. Now, how do we know if this effect is statistically significant? How do we know that the difference in the difference between time one and time two in the two groups is statistically significant. So let's go look into the analysis and what SPSS gives you first 